This video is on Anchor Notes. I'm going to start with a quick review of basic theory. When we have a staff, a staff is five lines. Why? Because we have five fingers. Most of us do. Some have more or less, but most of us have five fingers. So we have, starting from the bottom, we have one, two, three, four, five lines, as I have written out up here. We also have in between one, two, three, four spaces. We don't know what any of the lines or spaces stand for until we give it a letter or some sort of designation. But once we state where one of the letters are, we know where all of the others letter are, all of the other letters are because we have a musical alphabet that always goes in order. So our musical alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And musicians are good environmentalists. Once we get there, we recycle and start over with A. So what comes after G is A. What comes before A is G. And so on and so forth. On most pianos, most pianos, down here at the bottom, we actually start with an A if the setup is like this, where you have one here. Some, some of the grand pianos and so forth, they have a few extra keys down there, but mine actually starts with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, then we start over with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so forth, all the way up to the top up there, and we have a top C, if the pattern is three, there's your C, and not only is it important to learn your alphabet going forwards, but to learn it going backwards as well. So C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, and so forth all the way back down. That's an important thing to practice. If you notice on the piano, we have patterns, aside for this lonely guy down here by himself, um, we have patterns of two and threes. So that's an important thing to be able to find on the piano, to notice on the piano. That helps everything else as far as the anchor notes are concerned. So I'm going to erase my letters here. And I'm going to designate one of the letters, one of the lines as a letter. I'm going to start with this top staff. And I'm going to make a fancy schmancy letter G. And I wrap around that G line many times. <gasps> I'm laughing because my treble clef, uh, as if I haven't drawn it a thousand and one times, but holding the phone and recording at the same time is not as easy as it seems. So right here we have that note is a G. This is a line note in music. It's really kind of crazy. We call line notes where the line goes through the middle of it. That can be somewhat confusing because uh, when you're in school and somebody or you're, you're signing a contract and they say write your name on the line, uh, you would write your name in the space above the line. In music, when they say write your name on the line or put the note on the line, it means that your name goes through the middle. That's a line name and that's a space name in terms of music. So once we know that this is the letter G, we go in order. So as mentioned, after G, we start over with A, then we have B, we have C, D, and so forth. Then we have to go backwards as well. So before G in the alphabet comes F, and before F is E, before E is D. And then we can extend the line, uh, extend the staff with little bitty lines called ledger lines. So ledger, ledger lines. We can extend them both above and below the staff as many times as we uh, would like to play that high of a note. Uh, we can get into that later, but we can extend the staff down. So that's the letter C, that's the letter B, and so forth. As far as this staff is concerned, the treble clef has stayed on this being the note G for 
few hundred years. It hasn't moved so much. Uh, it was a movable cleft, they all were, but it's sort of stayed stationary for quite some time now, just as the F clef. So this clef, which is the base clef, is a fancy schmancy letter F. And what it says is that this is an F, and after F in alphabet comes G, and then we have A, and we have B, and we can extend that up to a C, and we can keep going D and so forth. Likewise, we can go down, which means backwards. So we have E, D, C, B, A, G, I can continue it down. So the third clef that I'm going to mention is a movable clef. The one that I'm going to deal with today is for the violas, so I teach viola as well. And what it is, is it takes this middle line, so there's one middle line, that's our middle C, there's one middle line there, we steal the bottom two lines from treble clef, the top two lines from bass clef, and we combine those into our five lines. And then we make this fancy schmancy, fancy schmancy arrow, which points to middle C. So it's saying that this line is middle C. So if this is C, then this one's D, and this one's E, and this one's F, and so on and so forth, and this one is B, this one's A, this one's G. So where do anchor notes come in? Well, if you know a few anchor notes, you can figure out the rest of the notes. And for my students, I like to teach I like to teach the anchor notes so that they can use different clefs. They don't have to be stuck to one clef. As far as the grand staff is concerned, so if I have those two staves together, this one is a middle C. Middle C, if you find the name on your piano, you find your doghouse here, so the two black notes, and you go down one. That one's middle C, middle C. If I were to put my thumb on middle C and put one finger all the way up to my pinky where I run out of fingers, that is my treble G, my treble G, which is the line of my clef. If I do the opposite with my left hand, I put my thumb on middle C, and I walk my fingers down till I run out, that is my bass F. So I have this note, the line of my bass clef. So we have bass clef and treble clef, F clef and G clef. So those are our first three anchor notes. And then because I love I love dice. I got that from a teacher trainer named Joe Kaminsky, who's awesome and amazing. And um, I took on his love of dice and I found a million and a half ways to use them because they're awesome. And um, I add two more notes. I add a, a uh, low C and, sorry, a, a bass C and a, and a treble C. You can add a low C and a high C, but if you're doing a regular six-sided die, which is what I like to do, um, then there's six sides there. You can be more creative, but I make mine out of orange juice containers, so uh, I'd have to get creative with what, <laughs> what, I, what I used to make my die. So I'm going to erase those outer two so you can take a peek, and I'll play them so you can see where they are in relationship to the keys. So starting with my middle C, I find the name, the two black keys, C, that's my treble G. If I find the two black keys and then I find my very next doghouse up here, that is my treble C. If I, doing the bass clef, I have middle C with my left hand, I run out of fingers, that gives me my bass F, I find my letter C, I find the next doghouse down, and I have my bass C. So those 
for this cube are I have a treble C. I have, let's see if I can go, I have a treble G. I have a bass C. I have a middle C. I have a middle C in bass clef, so that note and that note are the exact same note. And I have a bass F. So those are the notes on the anchor notes for piano. For my anchor notes on violin and viola, uh, I like to go ahead and teach both my violinists and violas not to be scared of other clefs. So if we look up here, for violin, we have our highest note, our open E string, is right there. Our open A string is right there. So it's the one above the line of our clef. We have an open D string, which is the one right below that line. And then we have an open G, which in treble clef, violinists don't have to learn any other clef, but why not? They're so much fun. So we add a C and we add this line. So we have two ledger lines down and it looks like that. If you were to just see it with just treble clef, it would look like this. So that's our open G. And then of course, violist, our lowest note here is this one. It's the open C. So for alto clef, for violist, we have open C, open G, open D, and open A. For violinist, we have open G as our lowest note. We have open D, open A, and open E. And what that looks like on the cube is we have open E, open A, open D, open G. These two notes are the same, so for alto clef, that's an open G, that's an open G, and then we have open C. So when I play this game with my pre-twinkle violin, uh, they have one alto clef note that they cannot play, and one that they can play, so they have to know the difference between those two. And then for my violas, um, we have to learn treble clef anyway, so we may as well learn it from the beginning, right? So those notes on here's my five string. So I have I have open E, I have open A, I have open D, I have open G, and I have open C. And if you don't already have one, I highly suggest the string swing. It is amazing as far as like increasing the amount of practice. You, this is actually a plaster wall. It took me a long time to be able to trust it. It's been up for over a year now and I love it. Uh, love the company as well. Uh, so you can you can take a peek at that if you're struggling with getting that instrument out of the case as everybody including myself who loves to practice. Um, you, you can take a peek at their at what they have to offer with what you have available in, in your house. I think it helps tremendously with practicing though. So hopefully that helps a little bit as far as the, the notes are concerned. And I'll have a PDF and uh, attached in the description below with, with uh, timestamps on where each thing is so you don't have to listen to the whole video again. <laughs> Hope that helps. Thanks.